And here you go. Thank you. Hello, are you ready? Try this. It's chocolate. Hello, this is Robert Rodriguez, and it's the return of the 10-minute cooking school. Chocolate. I'm going to show you how to make amazing chocolate. Okay, first off, you know those fancy little chocolates you get in a box? This is probably like 20 bucks right here. We're not making those. I mean, what is this? There's no filling, there's no chocolate, and they charge you an arm and a leg. You can make better chocolates than this at home. First, you find the best chocolate, and then you make your own amazing fillings. I'm talking ganaches with the finest tequila, the finest caramels, the nut butters, honey, for my own honeybees, and you get the idea. No one will ever make chocolate this decadent. And the portions, forget it, these little nothings. No, we're not making that. Grushka sized chocolates with a much better filling to chocolate ratio. I'll be using plastic molds, a set of big skulls, deep sets that'll take plenty of filling, and a custom mold I made for the movie with a 3D printer with a symbol of Zalem on the front. With these chocolate making methods, you'll be the envy of all your friends and you'll rule the world. I shouldn't even show you this because it'll give you way too much power over the overpriced and valueless chocolate business. Because I make a lot of chocolate, I have a tempering machine. Today I'm making molded chocolates where I want that tempered look and feel. I'm gonna show you how to do it by hand. But if you're a chocolate nut like I am, and wanna get serious about chocolate making, well, invest in a simple chocolate tempering machine. The best way to temper chocolate by hand. You can microwave it in 30 second blasts until it gets to about 110 degrees you should use a thermometer and while stirring you have to keep it agitated add in the rest of the chocolate and the overall chocolate reaches about 80 degrees and warm it back up to 90 degrees with the machine it's all really easy i drop in my chocolate which for me is half 41 percent and half 61 percent i choose the milk chocolate setting on the machine and it heats it to 110 degrees I can drop in the sea chocolate when it asks me and it cools it to 80, then it reheats it up to 90 again on its own. And then it's ready to go and I can start making my chocolates. While it's doing all this, I could be making my fillings. For fillings, I'm using, say, a cup or so of peanut butter, powdered sugar. You can eyeball this to get the structure you want. Sometimes I like it a little more structured, other times I go with a honey version that gives it a more creamy feel. I have honeybees at my studio, so I'm using a third cup of my own honey, which I've heated up a bit to make the mixing a little smoother. This is easy because there's no surprises. If it tastes amazing out of the bowl, it'll only be that good and better when you wrap it in chocolate. The other filling I'm going to do is a simple ganache. You need to chop up your chocolate into small pieces so it melts easier. Then you add heavy cream that's really hot, mix it, and that's your base. You can add fresh butter from there or ingredients that you'll never find in these store-bought chocolates like the finest tequila. They'd have to really overcharge you for that. When the chocolate is finished, the tempering machine will tell you and it's ready to pour into the molds. Get it all around the edges and shake off the excess. You don't want the chocolate to be too thick or there will be too little room for filling and it will be hard to bite into it. It also throws off your filling to shell ratio like those screwy expensive chocolates. Pop it in the freezer for about five minutes. Meanwhile, I'll fill some more molds. Shake off the excess, clean up the edges, Here's my first chilled mold. You see the chocolate is already solidified. I fill the first one with peanut butter. This is a huge chocolate, so I want to make sure I have enough filling. So one time I added some pecans to take up some of the filling room, which ended up being a good call because now I love how that tastes. So I pour on the bottom of the chocolate now to seal it. Make sure it seals the edges and pour off the excess. And then I love to add really good sea salt to the bottom. That mix of salty and sweet is just incredible. Back in the freezer, they all go to set. Five to 10 minutes later, you're gonna pop them out and see how they are. Oh my goodness. Check it out. All that incredible filling. Now let's compare that to those little $20 chocolates. <laughs> Big surprise. Let's check out our Alita bar. Look at that. Wow, oh, very professional. So great. I have a favorite food now. <laughs> oh yeah, see the salt on the bottom hits your tongue first. It's amazing. That's the way to go. It's like you died and went to Zalem. 
The best thing about making chocolate is from now on, no matter where you look, you'll get ideas for chocolate bars. Till next time, make chocolate.